All right, everyone, welcome. I am David Russell, VP of Market Intelligence here at TradeStation. And today we're going to be talking about candlesticks and advanced alerting. You're at a trade station showing some of the um, powerful things we can do with our platform. Uh, before we start, I want to just tell you that I have shared a link in the chat. Um, and that link, we're going to share a few more, but this link is a zip file that contains the custom tools. When you open the zip file, you're going to see three things. And one of them is an indicator file, an easy language document. You want to double click on this one first with TradeStation open, and it will import uh, three indicators. And once you have those imported, then you can open the workspace that I'm going to be using, which is here. And then this is just the slides that I'm going to be working through as well. This um, this Chrome document, it's a, it's a PDF. Okay, so we're gonna uh, work today talking about um, you know, alerts, candlesticks, some kind of advanced things we can do with technicals and um, um, scanning. I'm gonna actually do some stuff with scanner in this one as well, uh, using the TradeStation platform. There's a lot of really interesting uh, functionality that some of you guys might not be aware of, and I'm excited to share it with you. First, I want to just mention again, um, here is the link to the zip file. And again, what, you, what you're going to do is the zip file, when you open it, will look something like this. You double click on it, and it will then have this little uh, thing, and you go, and it's going to bring in three different indicators. I'm not going to do it because I already have them, but you would hit finish. It'll bring them in. Some of these have been used on my previous. Um, presentations, um, EMA alert with cro uh, this one, the EMA with alert and MA cross days since. You guys, if you've been on any of the webinars, you might have these. The new one I'm excited about today is break above pullback, which we're going to be getting into as an advanced alert um, uh, indicator. Um, before we do that, I want to just kind of tell you guys a little bit, bit some of the things I've been doing here at, um, at TradeStation. Um, I I'm the VP of Market Intelligence, so I look at a lot of things happening in the market. And if you're on the TradeStation website and you go to Research Insights, you can come to the blog that I run here. So some of the things that I do, um, we look at the blog today, some of the things that kind of stood out to me I've done recently um, is, first of all, this story about inflation, I think, was interesting. If you look on Market Insights, you know, we had kind of um, been talking a while back, um, going back really into late May about the, the beginning of the end of the inflation problem. If you look here at events um, economy, we had noticed the crash in lumber prices um, at the end of May. We had noticed other uh, signs of inflation easing. And um, it's important, I think, to realize that this is a process seeing inflation fade. And we have been very much kind of tracking it as it went along. So I encourage you guys to read Market Insights. We dig into data that a lot of people don't talk about. But it's always out there. And I would just mention this time around that the Institute for Supply Management, the PMI, the economic indicators that showed the actual prices being paid for factory goods and services, a lot of this pointed to an improvement um, a while back and we were talking about it. So um, that was one thing I wanted to mention. Another thing is we had this article um, last week about the semiconductor situation. And I want to just mention that um, this is something semiconductors have been one of the top sectors that people like to trade. But you know, recently we've seen some, some news that has not been so hot. We've actually seen semiconductor sales start to slow down. And now just um, here, this was an interesting article I saw pop up on Bloomberg um, yesterday um, about semiconductors kind of slowing. So I wanted to just kind of point this out because a lot of people like trading advanced micro and NVIDIA and stuff like that. Now we also did something over on TradingView. If you guys go to this link, let me just show you um, our, our trading view page. It's basically uh, this. So basically, trading view is an outside uh, API partner we work with. And we had actually done kind of an analysis here of um, the, the, the semiconductor index. And what's really interesting is if you look at the semiconductor index and we let this play out, um, you can see here we, we have the potential here of something of a double top which is interesting because if we look at the overall S&P, for example, recently we see today that we made a new multi-month high. If we look at the semiconductor index, we see that today we did not. Um, so this is to me something that I think we wanna keep our eye on. The semiconductors are showing a lack of relative strength. They have had 
um, not the greatest forward kind of guidance. Um, and they, they were a heavily owned um, sort of part of the market. So I want to just point that out to people. To me, it's interesting that they remain below the June high while the broader market is above the June high. So these are some of the things we look at technically. And if you actually look at some of the other things we've done here, you know, we were kind of plotting a lot of the things here that, that um, anticipated these breakouts. And we had written about this on TradingView at different times. So you might want to follow some of the ideas like this one we had on the NASDAQ. So you might want to just follow some of these things because we don't always um, have the ability to, to do webinars quickly, but we're always publishing this stuff for, for you customers. Um, another one I wanted to just quickly mention, I'm just going through these things that were important to me. Um, back on July 21st, we did this article really about natural gas. And what's interesting is, is today, I want to show you very quickly natural gas futures because um, you know this is jumping here. It's actually the highest close apparently. Um, but so if we look here on Reuters, we see that Russia is basically saying, oh, your, your gas prices might go up this winter. Uh, European gas prices are jumping. So you basically have, um, more, you know, um, article here, the Bloomberg article. So I wanted to just mention that we were talking about this back on July 21st, and we also outlined some energy stocks that are highly focused on the gas side of the equation instead of crude, because crude is not doing nearly as well. So you might want to check some of those out as well. And finally, I wanted to mention, well, two other things technically about the S&P 500 before we dig into this, is that this is a custom indicator that we've shared with, um, with people, especially in Masterclass. It counts how many days the 10-day moving average on the S&P is rising. And I use it as a little bit of an informal overbought, oversold, kind of how long in the tooth is a rally. And what's interesting here is that we're kind of getting near long-term levels. You know, it's not necessarily the extreme, but we've been we've been oozing up here for a while. And it's important also to realize that if you look on some of the other charts that we have like the 200 day moving average coming down and we have this level from the beginning of May, this potential resistance level. So all these things are kind of coming into play as we inch toward the um, as we inch toward the summer. Finally, I wanted to point out that back on August 3rd, we did this article kind of showing how volatility has just been collapsing. So I think it's important also to kind of bear that in mind. We had a lot of fear in the market and it's really been fading recently. And from my perspective, it creates a situation where um, people are going to be looking more for individual stocks, more for individual opportunities, and the big indexes are gonna be less of a move. And this is a, a common thing we see, the market crashes, all in unison, it rebounds in unison, and then volatility slows, the movement gets smaller, and then the VIX comes down, and then you start to see individual stocks popping while others fade. Today, the big move within some of these retail names like Bed Bath & Beyond, and this is exactly what you would expect to see when volatility comes down. We start to see the individual names back in play. Finally, if you are interested in any more, we do have Masterclass. This is a course where um, I help people kind of use some of these tools on the TradeStation platform. So uh, just check it out, wanted to share that. And now let me get back to um, our webinar. So basically um, there are some different things here that um, I want to uh, work through. First are gonna be basic alerts. These are just some really simple sort of things. Now let's go to the, the TradeStation workspace. Hopefully you guys, if you've um, go ahead and use this, remember this is a, these are the slides right here. And um, if you go to that, it'll actually, you can follow along with me. We're starting here pretty much on slide uh, five. Um, let me, let's actually go now to the workspace. Okay, so here's the workspace. If you've loaded the indicator, this is what you should have. And um, what I've done with this is this has the 200 day moving average in green. It has a 50 day simple moving average in red. And then it has the 21-day exponential and the eight-day exponential. And this is something that a lot of people kind of look at, some of these, these moving averages, the, the 50 simple, the 200 simple, and the eight and 21 EMAs. So um, we also have on this parabolic SAR, which I'm going to be using for one of the scans. And then we also have Keltner channels, which I'm going to be showing you guys. I changed the Keltner channels to be black and uh, just simple white. If you load them yourself, they're colored but I like them to be just dotted white lines because then they don't confuse me with my moving averages. If you wanna do that, you click on it and you go to style and color. And then you can also adjust the thickness and things. All right, so 
alerts, there's a lot of interesting things here on TradeStation in terms of setting alerts. And when we look at the first thing we want to see, um, it's, it's a basic sort of, um, um, the most basic thing is a stock hits a certain level, it sets off an alert. Um, and the other one is a stock makes a big move up or down, whatever it is, um, and you want those to be alert. So everything we're using here um, in this webinar, we're going to be using the chart, we're going to be using radar screen, and we're going to be using scanner. When you open up the, um, the menu from the apps, you can see radar screen is this little circular thing. I actually like to move it over here. So, cause I use it so much, I'm addicted to radar screen and move some of these things around. It's this little thing that looks like an old fashioned, like radar, you know, screen or something. And um, so say we have, for example, a very simple thing. You want to see a, a stock pull back to a certain level. So here we have, for example, let's start with raw stores because it's at the top of my list. Very simple. If you say, well, this is nice. I want to see Ross. Um, I want to know when it breaks out above 95 or if it pulls back to 90, for instance. You double click. Now, this is the last. This is just the last price. Now, this is a technically for radar screen. This is actually a study or an indicator. It's just the last price, but it allows you to input a value. So if you actually look, there's an input and then there's a high alert and a low alert. So you could set the high alert to 95 and the low alert to 90. And then you wanna turn on the alert in this tab, and then you can say enable alert, and then you can say alert, I say alert once, for example, um, and then you just set that. And then if the stock you know, does anything, if it goes above or below those lines, it'll set off an alert. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it actually triggers um, an alert. Um, that's the, 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 the first one to start. Next we have, if you want to see, say there's a stock that's sitting in a really tight range and you say, I'd really like to see some kind of movement. Like for example, I was recently looking at United Health. I know it's not the most interesting stock, but it's interesting to me the way it's just kind of sitting in here. And I'd like to see it maybe a, you know, a bigger movement in a name like this. I'd like to see a day when it moves 3% up and then maybe that's a sign. Maybe we get a, you know, a break. I'm just talking purely of like, you know, different things that are you know, potentially the sort of signals people might look for. So what you could do here with a name like, um, well, actually UNH, I have the NASDAQ 100 here. I could look at something like Amazon, for example, whatever. I can go here and I double click on, on net percentage change and I set the input. And this is also going to be expressed in percent. So um, in numbers on here. So for example, two is 2% 2 up and minus two is 2% 2 down. And if I set the alert, enable alert, alert once, I set it. Now, if it happens, it's gonna pop up an alert on my screen. So those are the first two things uh, we're basically gonna do. This is very simple uh, with last and net percentage change. Okay, now, say for example, we look at a stock here that's been rallying, like, I don't know, Let's look just at our list here. Maybe a stock like Apple. One thing you're going to notice is that this is a green symbol link here, and this is a green symbol link here. It means that whatever I click on in the radar screen will pop up on the right. So we look at a name like Apple, and we say, you know, I'd love to see Apple pull back to its 200-day moving average, for example. So I have here an indicator that's included in TradeStation called moving average one line. And if I go to this, I think I actually set it up. I, it's now set up for the, the, the native setting, which is the default setting is nine a nine period. But say I want a 200 day moving average. You'll notice it changes. Now I go to Apple and I just go to enable alert. And as it pulls back, it will trigger an alert simply because I set an alert and you'll get a little message saying Apple has crossed the moving average. And this will be true if you set it down here and it crossed above, it would tell you Apple crossed above the 200 day right here. And if it pulls back the same thing. Now, the next one is called EMA with alert on cross. And what this is, is this is a one that is um, um, a custom one that I created. There is an exponential moving average on TradeStation. And when you put it into radar screen, its alert is a little bit different. Its alert will tell you if, it's, if the moving average changes direction. 
which is kind of cool because you know, the, the exponential moving averages can be, you know, interesting sort of, um, you know, trend indicators. I, I think the, the, the 21 day can be a pretty interesting trend indicator. Like, you know, if you look at when this changed direction, the gold line here, you know, it, it gave something of a signal. I don't use it that much, but I have found that the, that the, um, I like the moving average cross, which I'm going to show you later in the webinar, but this is still something that is, um, you know, potentially sort of um, an interesting one. But I, let's just look for, hey, let's find out when the stock pulls back. Um, I'd love to buy Apple when it pulls back to the eight-day exponential moving average. You might say for, you know, demonstration, I'll have to say that that's what I think. But say, you're, say you want to buy Apple on a pullback. You can say, you know, if it pulls back to that eight-day, I want you to tell me. So we go here and let's first check our settings. And we see this is actually set right now to 21 day. So we can change that to eight day, for example. And now it's going to change all of those. And I can double click on it and I can go to alert, enable alert. And I can say alert once. And now if Apple touches that, it's going to fire off an alert. and It's going to pop up and tell us it happened. Now, what's really interesting is you can do different ones for different stocks. You can go to like Airbnb and say, I want that one to be a 21 day exponential. And if you double click on just the cell, you can then change it to 21. And then for Apple, it might be eight and you can make it different ones for different uh, stocks. I generally don't like to do that because you get confused. I like the whole column to be the same thing, but you can have, the, you can have two versions of the same column. So you can go, for example, here and say studies add study, and you go EMA with alert on cross, the EMA starts popping up. And now I, you'll see a second one pops up and I can have two different ones, for example, and those will also have alerts. So I'm gonna remove that. But I just wanna show you, that's essentially the way you would set it up. So that can help you find stocks that have pulled back to a moving average, or if they're falling, like say, for example, you wanna be bearish on Airbnb, say it's you know here and you're like, you know, I wanna short this, but it's oversold. I wanna get a rebound that I can, that I can you know, get short on, for example, if you, you're thinking of something like that, for trend following, you could just be you know, here in like you know, early May, you could set an alert saying, tell me when it hits the 21 day EMA, which is this, and it would, it, it would have waited and watched for you for several weeks and then boom, it would have come off. So very often, you, know, you might have a, your watch list of stocks and you can just enable a column, just bring in a column like this with a 21 day EMA, and it can find potential, you know, uh, pullbacks to trends, reversions to trends, upside or downside, whatever you want to do. And simply by having this alert in place, if you have your list of stocks you like, it might fire off ideas to you at different points in time. So it's a good tool to kind of have. You don't have to set levels. You just will track the movement itself. And that's kind of cool. All right. Are you saying the green S at the top of the screen? Yes, this is symbol linking. And I had it enabled when you loaded the workspace, but that's the reason why. Just so you know, it, it's a function that's also on the TradeStation mobile, I mean, the TradeStation um, web uh, platform. But if you click on a symbol here, it will pop up over here, this green thing. And you can do different ones. You can have green and blue. So you could have like a blue radar screen and a green radar screen, and then a blue chart and a red chart if you wanted to. You know, things like that you can do. So remember, this last one I just showed you is a custom um, indicator. And if you're interested in learning more about custom indicators and writing your own code in easy language, please consider Masterclass. Um, I help teach that mostly a Jesus class, uh, Jesus Nava, the guru of the TradeStation platform. I, I learn a lot from him all the time. Um, you know, my approach is always kind of coming into this as someone who writes about the market. I look at the market um, and um, I've. I love TradeStation because it allows me to do all kinds of analysis and find insights, but Jesus is the real guru on the actual um, uh, platform. Okay, now the next one is going to be this custom one I created that is, to me, really exciting, and I, I think it's um, a, a lot of fun. And with this is called Break Above Pullback. This detects a pullback after a price, after price has crossed a certain level. Now, the most recent example I came up with on this was this stock DQ. Now, I just, this is a crazy one, but it's a Chinese solar stock. And I was watching it down here. And what I wanted was, I was looking at this level. And I think all of us see this. Tesla had something like this recently. But the one that made me um, 
go ahead and, and reactivate this indicator that I had in, I had been working on it and I came up with a good idea of how to do it was basically say a stock is down here and you see a level like this and you're like, I'd really like to get a breakout above that level. Now, unfortunately, the problem is very often if you get a, usually when you get the breakout, it's already extended and you don't have a nice pullback where you can have that potential. This alert would have allowed you to set up an alert so it has to go above the level and then come back down to it. And that's really cool. So I also saw another example of this recently was Tesla down here. Tesla broke out above, you know, this level around like it was right. What was it around like 770 or something, you know, and say you're down here and you see Tesla jump up, it could pull back and alert you on a pullback to that level. So this is, you know, really sort of, um, uh, an interesting tool because what I now do is I have a whole set of stocks that I'm interested in trying to to do something with, and I'll set these levels and then boom, it, it'll watch it for weeks and weeks and weeks. It can be good for looking for things that are breaking out and pulling back and, and patterns like that. Um, a lot of this now, honestly, CRM was kind of, I've been watching this one as well. Um, you know, CRM here, I've been watching this sort of line here. Are we going to get a breakout above, you know, kind of 194? And you know, say you get a breakout above and a pullback toward that, that might be some something you're looking at. Moderna also, I think, had some patterns like this recently. Like down here, it, it broke out above this resistance line around 150, pulls back. So how does it work? All right. Speaking of Moderna, this was one I was going to use as an example today. You can you'll notice here this thing break above pullback has all zeros. That's because the level hasn't been set for any of them. So I'm going to go down here to Moderna. These are in alphabetical order, MRNA. And I'm going to set at a level at 168. Now, this is just hypothetical, but I want you to see how it would work today. So I'm going to double click on it. Wait, wrong column. Double click on the break of a pullback. And now we're going to set a level, 168. And then I'm going to I'm going to hit OK first. And you see, you'll notice it turns white. And the reason it turns white is because today it triggered that. It went above 168 yesterday. 168 is right around there. It was above 168. And then today it went below that. So that would be considered a triggering event. Now, this is, you know, if you look at this, this is not any kind of clear pattern that's particularly interesting. But this just shows how this candle works. I mean, today I didn't see any, it didn't trigger anything for me, but this is how it would work. So Say, for example, you wanted a breakout in CRM above like, you know, 195 or something, you know, you would set, you could set that using this, uh, although CRM is not in the, the NASDAQ 100. So here's, you'll notice that when it lights up in white, that means that it had a triggering event today. Now, I did not turn the alert on yet. So let's look at this. I'm going to double click on this again. I'm going to go to alerts. I'm going to say enable alert, alert once. Now, look at this. Um, now, let's just see. It's going to show a pop up on the screen for 15 seconds. By the way, you can configure these. Uh, it's pretty self explanatory um, to, to set this up. And you can make it talk to you as well, which I've been doing recently. It, it's a lot of fun. So I'm going to hit OK. See, this pops up here. Now, I'm going to show you something else. Go to Window. I'm sorry, go to View, Messages, and then Message Center. And now you're going to notice you cannot see it very well, but there it is. So I'm going to just, for educational purposes, I'm going to remove them all. And you can see literally how it will pop up right in front of you. And this is good because it allows you to go back hours later and see all the alerts that happen. So for something like this one, I'm going to just set, let's just set this like to zero again. Okay. And now let's set it to 168. 168, and we'll go to alert, enable alert, alert continuous. We'll say alert once, boom, pops up on the screen and it pops up here. So this is pretty useful because it tells you the workspace. It tells you the app that launched it because um, a, a chart can launch an alert as well. Um, and it tells you um, the actual indicator, break above, um, break above pullback. See, it actually tells you where it came from. So it could tell you it was triggered by last. It was triggered by net percentage change or any of those things. So these are some of the interesting things and just the way you can navigate them using Message Center.
Okay. Um, I did see some questions. This will about a recording of this. This will be posted on YouTube in a couple of weeks. Um, all right, that was slide seven. <clears throat> slide eight is Keltner channels and Bollinger bands. Now, um, I showed you guys the initial thing here. Uh, just wanted to show you how radar screen kind of works. Now we're going to add some more stuff that's going to take up more real estate on our radar screen. We're going to go to studies, add studies, and then we're going to go to Keltner. Going to add Keltner channels. And then we're going to go to Bollinger Bands. I'm not a fan of Bollinger Bands, but I know some people are. I'm a, I'm a fan of Keltner channels. All right. So I do not have Bollinger Bands on my chart. But let's go to Keltner channels. Very simple. Go to alert, enable alert once. Boom. And now we got a bunch of alerts. Let's actually go back to our uh, message center. And we can see we got a Keltner channel alert on MAR. Price, price cross above the upper band on Marriott. So you can see here the Keltner channel is this white dotted line on my chart. Um, and that's something that's interesting. Now, again, this is useful if you're watching many, many stocks and you want to look for stocks that will follow the Keltner channels. Um, this can be, you know, a useful sort of tool. I'm trying to remember some apps, some, some, some stocks recently that did follow Keltner channels. Um, some people like them. And then the other one is FTNT, 14Net, which is a cybersecurity company. Um, pulls back to the bottom of the Keltner channel there. Um, it just kind of gives you an alert on that. Again, the thing about something like this is if you're watching 50 to 100 stocks, maybe there's a bunch of stocks you view as potential opportunities you might want to own. If you put them in there and you put on a Keltner channel, it can tell you when it's pulling back to um, you know potential level. And the idea of something like Keltner channel is, you know, it drops and you can see that to a certain extent, it moves between the Keltner channels. You can do the exact same thing with Bollinger Bands. If you go to alert, enable alert, enable alert once, boom. We got a bunch of signals there from Bollinger Bands. We got one on Workday and a few others. So those are some of the things you can do um, with, um, with Keltner channels and Bollinger Bands. Um, Bollinger Bands, the thing I don't like about them is they, they get bigger and smaller a lot. Um, and I like Keltner channels because they often kind of give you a pretty decent like trend. Um, and so you guys can play around with them and see. Um, we'll move on now to uh, finding potential changes of direction using MACD. Um, MACD is just one of those kind of go-to things a lot of people use. If we go here, we go to studies, add study. I can add MACD to my chart just so you can quickly see it. Um, you know, I haven't been using it as much recently. I've, I've, I've been kind of finding that the 8 and 21 day has been, for me, a stronger indicator. But some people do like to look for things like um, MACD crosses. So you can go for this. I'm just going to remove now Keltner channels and Bollinger Bands to save some real estate. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to studies, add study. I'm going to go to um, MACD. And I'm also going to add the other one, volume average. I'm going to add that one. And I'm going to go to volume average. I'll mention that you'll notice it's also being called volume today. And that one also has alerts. But the problem with that one, not a problem, but that one is going to be set for absolute levels. So um, I'll actually bring it in so you can see how it works. And we'll move these down. The drawback of volume today is that if you use it for multiple stocks, um, if they have different average volumes, which most stocks do, um, then you know you cannot set one value for all of it. So let's just start with MACD. Um, go to this. We're going to set um, alert, enable alert once. Boom. We got some signals. Let's see what it gave us. Where did my message center go? There it is. So MACD gave us um, moving average. These are bearish, potentially bearish signals in Intel. Let's take a look at Intel. You know, I, um, it crossed, actually, this is a bullish one. It crossed above zero. And then intuitive surgical crossed under ISRG. For example, you can see there the MACD dropping. So that's just, um, you know, it has this, this pattern here, and then this is a cross that some people might consider 
a bearish signal. Like I said, I'm not sure how much I use MACD as much as I as much as I used to, but it, it's pretty cool to be able to set alerts on it if you have a list of 50 to 100 stocks and boom, there you go. It'll alert you and you just look at your message center and you've got it. Now, volume average. What's cool about this one is this one allows you to set a threshold. So for example, it's going to look at, um, in this case, the average volume over the last 50 days, and then it's going to set a percentage. So if it goes to 150% of the 50-day average, in this case, it's going to set an alert. So if one stock trades 100,000 shares a day and it goes to 150,000, it'll set an alert. If another stock trades 2 million and it goes to 3 million, it'll set an alert. The nice thing about that is compared to, um, let's, just go, let's just activate it. We'll go to enable alert once. We got some alerts on that as well. Just so you see, um, Zoom video came up on that one. Um, and then volume today, that one will only let you set an absolute value of whatever number um, in there. So I wanna just kind of show you guys these two different things. And for this webinar, we wanted to show you guys volume average because that's the one that's more dynamic. You know, for a lot of this is really a question of, I watch a lot of stocks. I, I, there's a lot of them that maybe if I get a good opportunity, I want to have an, uh, an opportunity to trade it or something. Maybe that's what you're thinking. And that's really what a lot of this is intended to do. This is intended to help you guys, um, you know, spot those sort of opportunities when you have a big list of, of candidates um, and really letting TradeStation do the work for you. That to me is one of the most important things about this, because I find that when it comes to dealing with emotions and trading, a lot of my emotions are not fear and greed. They're frustration and aggravation of things like, oh, I, I have to set an alert and I have to do this and I have to do that and I get too busy. And then I start making, I get sloppy because I don't have um, everything in order. And TradeStation makes it so easy to keep those things in order. So that's really what these sort of um, tools are intended to do. All right. Now we're going to move on to candlesticks. And I should just say off the bat that um, I love candlesticks. I've done them before and they've worked more in other environments. I didn't focus on them as much in this webinar as I expected when I created the webinar, because as I really looked at the market we've been in coming out of June and July, there have not been a lot of candlestick signals, in my opinion. Um, and that's not a surprise. There's another webinar I've done when I talk about how the market goes through these kind of cycles. You have your, you know, your fear correlated crash. You have your relief correlated rebound, and then you have your stock pickers market. And I've I use that as my overall structure for everything. Um, and different people do that differently, but it it also matches what a lot of you know quantitative models use when they see VIX going up. Then they know you reduce risk when VIX goes down. Maybe then they allow you to allocate more you know, risk. And this is stuff that like hedge funds and, and, and institutional investors use. So using the VIX and volatility as a measure of correlation is a pretty standard process. For, from my perspective, I just kind of try and say, which of these three phases are we in? And we've mostly been in the, you know, fear crash and the relief rebound for the last four or five months. And now if we are going to get into more of a stock pickers market, candlesticks might start to become more interesting. So most of you guys probably know candlesticks. Um, this chart is a candlestick chart. And um, it is set just so you realize the style, you control that on TradeStation. There's candle and candle with trend. If you go to just candle, the candles are all going to be solid. So you want candle with trend. And when it's hollow, it means that it's, I don't want to call it bullish, but it means that it closed above the open. So, you know, this one, the close was above the open. And if it's solid, it means the close was um, was below the open. And then the tails show the extremes of the move um, up and down. You know, candle like this one right here, um, if you look at, you know, this one closed near the low, but it's still closed up, so it's, so it's green. That's a nice thing about candle with trend. It allows you to see the range of movement, the, the high versus, you know, the, the open versus the close, but it also allows you to see the percentage change for the period. Um, so the most common, the one that I have found recently to be, um, you know, somewhat kind of, uh, of interesting has been something like the hammer candlestick pattern. So let's look at what some of these examples are. We're, we're on slide 11. And TradeStation allows you to spot some of these things. So we have, for example, the S&P 500. 
which is dollar sign SPX.X. And if you look at it on June 30th, right here, this was, this was actually more of a doji. This was a hammer. Um, and what you see is, is when it closes near the high and has a long tail to the downside. Um, this was very interesting because this was a false breakdown. It went under this level and it held. And we wrote a lot about this. We were really focused on this level and this false breakdown at the time. Um, if you look at our, on uh, July 14th, that's another example of, of, um, of a hammer. You look at Apple on May 20th. Apple had a big hammer right here on May 20th. It stabilized and it moved higher. So a hammer is important when it comes at the end of some kind of decline or is near some kind of bottom. You know, it, a hammer near a high is not a bullish signal, but when you have something of a downward trajectory um, and then the hammer occurs, what it basically signifies is it signifies that it tried to go lower and it wasn't able to sustain. And often you're gonna find a hammer following a bounce. If it goes down and you see the hammer, you're often gonna see that the next move will be higher. It may continue lower after that, but it does give you a signal that you're gonna have that move to the upside potentially. Um, another one that I actually wrote about recently on TradingView was Monster Beverage. This one had a hammer at the 200-day moving average. Um, and then another one was the NASDAQ 100 on July 22nd. Wait a second. No, I'm sorry. That's not a hammer. No, SQM, sorry. SQM on August 5th. I wrote about this on TradingView as well. It has a hammer right here at the 50-day moving average, little pullback, and then a continuation. We wrote about it coming off of this bounce, and it, it was an interesting sort of thing. Um, this is a, a, a lithium stock. If you don't know if you like electric cars, this is an interesting company you might want to might want to learn about because it um, they, they're a lithium provider. And that was slide 11. Okay, another one are, is the hanging man. Now, this is a hammer when it occurs near a high. And this is a sign of exhaustion, which can indicate that um, it's an end of the preceding uptrend. A hammer at a high after an uptrend, followed by lower prices. So let's look at the S&P 500 on March 30th. March 30th, right there. No, actually, this was the hammer here. And, and in many ways, this was a hanging man as well. You know, when you have it near a high like this, um, it's it's a sign of kind of exhaustion. Another one that was also a hanging man was the S&P 500. I have, I have another list here. I prepared some of these notes a while back and now I'm going back and looking at them. It was on February 2nd. All right, this in many ways was a hanging man. It was a hammer. It, you know, it, it went up to a new high and then it basically, you know, went down, it tested, pushed higher, and then it just stalled. And as you see after this kind of pattern, when it failed to continue higher, this was where the, the, the signal came on this one. Then let's look at ExxonMobil on August 1st, right here. Rallies, tries to pull back, and you get this little hammer thing just sitting here and then a continuation to the downside. Again, from a bullish perspective, you you know the you know bulls would have wanted to see um, a, a, a close, you know, somewhere higher along this line. And I'm just even thinking about a stock like this here. And you know, it obviously was in, you know, it had been kind of bouncing up toward this resistance level. But the key thing is, you get this hammer and then very little continuation, and it just peters out. This is very often what you see with something like, um, you know, the hanging man. You, you get this idea that the buyers step in, they give it one college try, and then there's no one there to get their back. And then you get the sellers come in a couple of days later. So the hammer can be, uh, the, the hanging man can be one of these false signals that can kind of suck people in if you want to try and be long. Um, all right. Other candlestick patterns include things like a shooting star. That's when you have a high tail to the upside that then fades. It can be a reversal pattern at the end of an uptrend. I haven't seen a lot of shooting stars recently. Then you have something like a doji, which is when it swings wildly in both directions. And um, then after that, you get 
um, a potential reversal of the preceding trend. And that in many ways was what the S&P 500 actually had back here. This was a doji right here on the 30th of June. Um, and then the other one that's important is the outside bar. Now the outside bar, we had a couple of examples of that. That is when price completely, um, when, when the low is below the previous day and the high is above the higher day. And that can also be um, a reversal pattern. So if we look at Exxon Mobil on August 10th, that was another one, uh, August 10th would be right here. What's interesting about this one is, is that you had this outside day and the continuation to the upside. It doesn't mean necessarily that it's any significant sort of trend, but what, what matters about this is for, for short-term trading and people wanna trade options, a signal like this, can give you a two to three day sort of signal. It tried to break down, the buyers stepped in and the bears got stuffed. And basically you had a little bit of a pop to the upside. If you're an options trader, things signals like this can be highly useful. Um, and then another outside bar was the NASDAQ on, on July 22nd. Look at this outside bar right here. It makes a high and a low. It engulfs the previous day. And then you have follow through to the downside. Again, for short-term trading, uh, signals like this can be um, can be useful. For, this is very much for people who are going to be active and doing short-term trading. Some of these candlesticks can give interesting little tactical patterns. It's also interesting that it was right up there at the top of the Keltner channel, coming back down inside the Keltner channel. So that would have also triggered an alert using some of the um, the, the the techniques I'm showing you guys. Okay, so how do we find these things? Scanning for hammers. We're now going to use scanner. Uh, so to very quickly explain, um, scanner can look at the entire universe of stocks the trade station has, and research and uh, radar screen requires that you give it a list of stocks to watch. In this case, I have the Nasdaq 100. You can put your own list of stocks in, and it will then do these alerts along there. Uh, but scanner. Uh, we'll look at the entire universe of stock and then you provide criteria. I want to also tell you, this is another custom indicator I created. Um, most of you guys may or may not have it. I'm really proud of it. This is my favorite indicator I ever created. It tells you how long ago since the moving average crossed. So this was look at the eight and 21 day exponential moving average, but you can change it to simple and exponential if you go in and you change the settings. Okay. And what this does is, for example, let's look at Meta. This tells us that the eight day moving average crossed above the 21 day moving average four days ago. And we know it's above because it's a green number. So you can see right here, that's where it crossed above. And if we look at um, a coming at Comcast, we can see that the eight day crossed below this many bars ago. And then it, you know, so this can be another uh, kind of trend indicator. And I just showed it in radar screen so you see it exists because now we're going to use it in scanner. Uh, actually, we're going to use it for the next one. First, we're going to start off scanning. So what you want to do is um, you'll actually notice you go to window, you're going to go to scanner. And I have this already created, but I'm going to just um, very quickly, well, you know, I'll just start from scratch very quickly, create a scan. Let's just call it, you know, August. I'm going to just um, August 16th, right? I'm going to go to all stocks. I'm going to remove these so you see how to add them. I'm now going to go to volume, volume average 10 day. And then we're going to set to greater than, in this case, I'm going to set the 500,000. Don't use commas. And that's going to exclude stocks trading less than a million shares a day. You can obviously change that. You're going to go to capitalization, market capitalization, greater than 1,000, which is a billion because this is in millions, you can see that. Now we're gonna go to, here's the this special magic that makes it work. We go to, we roll down and we go to show me. And then we're gonna go to this thing called C Hammer Hanging Man. Um, C Hammer Hanging Man, we're gonna add that. And then we're, we're gonna to make sure we have this set correctly. You'll notice here that it can find either a hammer or a hanging man. So we're gonna make sure it's set the hammer. And then in this case, we're just gonna to set to true. This accepts what's called a Boolean value, which is true or false. And then we're going to hit run. And I can tell you that today, I don't know if it's going to work, honestly, at this hour. This is best to run in the morning. 
because what it will do is it will find signals from the previous close. And right now with the data, I don't know exactly how it's going to view it, but it found AbV when I ran it this morning. Here's a hammer. And it found CGen. Here's a hammer. So these are the sort of, of things that it can potentially find. Now I'm gonna quickly explain this to you as we go. Some other things you can do with this is, you know, this could bring back a lot of results maybe. So what you can do in some markets it might bring back a lot of results. So you can say, I only wanna find stocks that have a positive MACD. So you can add MACD. And then the thing that actually, the, the, in this case, the MACD histogram, the thing that shows when the MACD is rising is called MACD diff. And you just set it greater than zero. You can also say the last price is greater than a moving average. You can say, I want to find stocks that are above the 200 day moving average at a hammer yesterday. You can then set that. So here we actually have, we have some new results today. Let's look at the hammers we got today. Palantir, that's a hammer. So it's, it's actually is grabbing today's values. This Chinese car stock, XPEV. So that's how you scan for hammers. The thing is, I did this in a very simple way, but you might want to consider adding other criteria to it. Another thing to consider is adding volume, all options, volume, all average greater than 5,000. That will find stocks trading at least 5,000 options contracts a day, which also can be useful for more active trading. Um, you know, for me, very often, um, that can be a useful thing because I don't want to waste time with stocks that trade fewer than 5,000 contracts a day. Uh, because it can be too difficult to get uh, your your spreads. You can also set this to run your bid ask spreads. Might not be great. Now we go to this. You can set something like this to run schedule, and then you can schedule it to run automatically every day at like 7 a.m. Eastern or something like that. That way it'll be ready by the time you come, and it will show you the previous day's value. So you might find a bunch of potential signals. Like for example, um, you can run this also with with um, outside bar. I didn't actually show you that, but if you if you go here and we go to this, you can go to scan criteria. You could go to um, show me, and then you, there's actually one here called outside bar, and you could say I want to I want to see things that had outside bar yesterday, and then same thing you set to true, and that for example would have found you know something like the Exxon Mobil signal right here. If you were an active options trader, Exxon trades like several hundred thousand contracts a day. So that one would have signaled and that could have potentially given, you know, a sort of um, a sort of signal if you were looking for that sort of thing. Um, so these are other criteria that you can add if you if you want to. You can refine this down. Sometimes I create scans that have, you know, like 10 or 15 criteria. It's a really awesome thing to be able to do. Um, now I'm going to show you the next one, which is scanning for moving average crossovers. Now, this is something you, that's going to be a capital uh, leveraging the, the, the function I just showed you. Um, the, the custom tool uh, with moving average crosses. We're going to keep these two here. And this time we're going to go to indicator. And we're going to use MAX days since. We're going to set greater than zero. And then we're going to set MAX. We'll go back to indicator. We're going to set it to less than 10. So this will only find stocks that have the moving average crossover in the last 10 candles. Now we want to make sure we're looking at the right thing. Eight day and 21 day exponential. You want to make sure it's loading 270 candles or more, depending on what you're doing. I'll just warn you, with exponential moving averages, sometimes you have to set to tell it to load so many, so many bars of history. What I, I see this great question. What time frame does Scanner run against? Well, I'll show you a little. And this will blow your mind. I got to just say, this is pretty cool. Um, you can go here and you can actually set daily or hourly or weekly. Pretty awesome. So, um, and the great thing is, and, and I didn't want to do this because this is too much maybe for this webinar, but you can, and sometimes I'll do scans that use daily and hourly in one scan. So you can find stocks that maybe had hourly signals. Um, Cause I, I think sometimes the hourly chart can be pretty interesting for equities. And you can also do it with, with daily signals and you can control the interval right there. And this is true for any indicator. Uh, so like for moving averages and things like that. Anyway, when you're dealing with something that has exponential, make sure 
that it's going to load enough bars because sometimes the exponential function does not automatically load the bars. So this is 8 and 21. Let's just make sure that's the default value, but they're both set to 8 and 21. So we're going to shrink that back down. We're going to hit run. And this is now going to find stocks that are at least $1 billion, 500,000 of, of average stock volume, and that had an 8, 21 day cross to the upside in the last 10 candles. That's what this is going to tell us. Now, while that's running, let me also show you that there's some other things you can do with this. I generally try not to, you know, it's annoying to buy a stock that's up four or 5% in the last week. Um, sometimes it works, but at the same time, if you're looking for things that have maybe pulled back and you don't want to be chasing, you can also go to price percentage change. And these are the different uh, little values that pop up less than zero, a five day less than zero. So if we actually just go over while that's running, I'll just, just look at one of these other ones. Um, I don't know, I have, I'll just show, show you this. This is one I have, but what matters is you would go to price and then you go to percentage change. You see the little folders inside and then you say percentage change five day and then you would set less than five, for example, or less than zero. And this will find stocks that have the bullish cross, but, ha but ha are flat to negative in the last week, which then means that you have something of a pullback. That's, how, that's the, 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 the kind of path you would follow to do that. You would go price down this path. You can also set MACD positive the same way I showed you before. Now, remember, this one I'm showing you right now uses my custom indicator. It's not native to TradeStation. But after loading the ELD file that I shared earlier, I'm going to, it looks like some people, I'm going to just give you this link again really quick. It's in there. MAX day since. Let's see what our scanner gave us. Gave us some signals. Exxon Mobil. So Exxon Mobil, according to this, had the moving average cross how many days ago? I should actually warn you, this seems like a long time. Sometimes I've noticed when I run some of these scans right after the market closed, some of the values are, are not correct. I, I should tell you, because this doesn't seem like it's correct. Um, but it, I'm not sure why. It shows the, wait, I'm looking at the wrong, you know what? I'm looking at the wrong thing. Sometimes that is true. Sometimes around the close, you will not get accurate. And I'm not sure why. That's why I like to run things at like five in the morning, six in the morning. So when I get to my desk, they've already run. Um, sometimes in the afternoon, the data is updating. So this one will actually show you. So end phase, for example, this is, wait a second. I did something. I want to apologize. I'm not sure what I did. What happened to this? All right. Well, I just showed you how to let me use this one. This is the one thing about scanner. Yeah, this is the moving average cross. Here we go. So bed, bath, and beyond. There's that cross that occurred right here with the blue going above the gold. I also get the wrong scanner. That's the one thing I'll say about scanner. There's another little trick you might want to do. If you go to settings and you go to window, you can then say, I want to see, there's a way you can make it so it will show you the most recently it was run. And, you know, Jesus can show you that because I'm trying to remember here. Here we go. Last run. Let's add that. Sorry about this. All right. So now I can see the thing that ran most recently. That one. Okay. So this, this is an example of how that works. Now, remember, for something like this, it's obviously up a lot, but this would have triggered here. And if you had done the thing of saying, show me signals that had the cross and are you know, not up a lot in the last five days or something, you know, it, could have, it could have found this, you know, this thing here in Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, let's look at something like CCL. This one just popped up. Um, this one has had the cross here. So anyway, I, just, I think it's interesting. I haven't looked at any of these. So this is all news to me. But this is an interesting example that this would have this would have actually been triggered or been detected using this technique I'm showing you now. Remember that you would do that by you know 
setting you know the, this value to something under a certain level. And then the nice thing with that is you can also sort in the in the in the output that comes into scanner. All right, the last one I want to show you is scanning for trends with parabolic SAR, parabolic stop and reverse. This is an interesting thing, interesting um, tool. And actually, I've written about it recently on Market Insights. Um, I had an article at Parabolic SAR. If you want to check it out, if you go to Market Insights and you go to Education Platforms, I have that um, on Market Insights. So this, these are these kind of blue dots that you see on, on this stock. Um, this is Parabolic SAR. And it, it basically, when it's underneath the last price, it means you have um, the stock is considered to be in an uptrend. So I'm going to remove these really quickly. And then we're going to set to price. We're going to go to price. I'm going to say, I'm going to go to price last greater than Parabolic SAR, which is going to be an indicator. And then you want to make sure it's set to PARCL. Uh, I'm not sure what that stands for, but that's actually the value, the, the price value of where the little blue dot is. And um, you can also do now, I want to see stocks where the indicator, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to do this really quickly. Moving average one line, greater than moving average one line. And this is going to, I'm going to set another criteria, which is I only want to see it if the 50 days above the 200 day. Now, obviously it's a very elementary thing, but it's a simple one, pretty non-controversial. Now, if you do moving average, you can just make sure you change it. That's nine and nine. So I want to set it to 50 and I want to set the 200. And you want to say greater than, okay? And now I'm going to just hit, go ahead and run it. So what this is going to do is this is going to find companies with a parabolic SAR is, um, is below the price, but the, the 50 days above the 200 day. In this market, this is not a great scan because a lot of the stocks that have been trending, like Apple, haven't even had that pattern. Um, most of the stocks that have been trending here straight up are coming off deep oversold lows. But this works and this can potentially work in another environment. It worked well with, um, what was it? It worked with ARC. If you look back, you know, a while back, um, when you had this the big run in, in something like an arc or a zoom video, um, you know, it, it gave this sort of, of signal, like some of these moves were interesting. Um, so anyway, um, the, um, the thing about parabolic SAR is that it often detects at the overbought condition. So the one little thing about parabolic SAR is you might want to add another layer of saying, I wanna see when price is less than the eight day exponential moving average. Price last, less than indicator moving average exponential, then you're gonna set it to the eight day or nine day or something. You could set it to the 10 day simple or something like that. An example of that I have is something like Exxon Mobil. Exxon Mobil triggers here. It jumps up and the parabolic SAR turns bullish when it breaks above this little downtrend. All right, and then it knifes back down from 91 to 84. Now, if you'd been running this scan and you said, I wanna see it when the low is under the eight day exponential, it would have triggered you right there. The parabolic SAR would have actually triggered, um, you know, it would have turned bullish here, but by adding the pullback to the short-term moving average, it would have kept you from chasing an overbought condition. So this is some of the things you can do with um, combining parabolic SAR with moving averages. Parabolic SAR can be really interesting, but it's always giving signals. So it's a fire hose that kind of needs to be, to be moderated. Let's just look at what it gave us here. AT&T, for example, it has today this turn positive. I mean, um, like I said, you know, this is, you got to take parabolic SAR with a grain of salt, but then you can do that by using some of the other criteria I included here. The one last thing I'm going to mention is that <clears throat> The other value in parabolic SAR that it will give you are the numbers of days that cross bars ago. So this will actually tell you in, for a chart like this one, which is what Southwest Energy or something, you see there's one, two, three, four bars. Its value would be four. Look at a company like Apple. 
it's probably has like, what is this? Probably like 40 bars or something. So this, you might say this is long in the tooth. I don't want to be chasing it if it's been rising for at least 30 bars or whatever. You can add that level of refinement by adding another criteria using parabolic SAR, but instead of using the CL, the, the, instead of using the um, this PARCL, you would use this second output of the parabolic SAR indicator. Okay, so great to talk to you guys. I ran a little bit over time. I always encourage you to check out Market Insights, especially coming back after Labor Day. I'll have some more stuff, but it might be a little bit lighter on what you're gonna see there you know, through the end of the summer. It's great to talk to you guys. I hope I see some of you in Masterclass. And I really encourage you. Now, I gave you this code today. Let me just show you how to do this. Go to one of these indicators I gave you. And then if you right-click on it, and then you go to Studies, Edit Easy Language, you guys can dig right into the easy language and, and actually mess around with it. I'll just say, if you do want to mess around with it, you might want to first save it as a different name so you don't break the good version of it. Um, and then I try and put comments in there to kind of um, show how the code works and stuff. But um, you can do all that and hope you guys want to, you know, um, just d dig into easy language. It's really cool. Um, I mean, I'm not a professional coder, but there's a lot you can figure out if you just kind of play with it. So I hope to see all you guys soon and have a great day.